everyone, and welcome to this edition of HCAM Sports Talk. I'm your host, Tom Nappy. Well, believe it or not, the Hopkinton Hillers Fall 2 season has come to a close. We just had our final game of the season this past Sunday. It was Hillers Varsity Football against Norwood. And right now here on HCAM Sports Talk, we're going to take a look back at some of the best highlights from throughout the Fall 2 season. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this look back at the 2020-2021 Fall 2 season. That was a 103B front one and a half somersault pike. Juliana's up next. Juliana's a senior this year. Also performing a 103B. Now, did the divers like having the diving at the beginning? Well, yeah, I think so. I think it's nice because uh, they kind of get the jitters out right away and then they can be there for the rest of the team afterwards. Tess is doing the same dive as Eve, 104B. Job. That's a 401C. That's an inward dive and tuck. We have Tyler Holbrow in lane three in the lead, followed closely by Mia Carboni in lane four. Oh, and uh, looks like uh, in lane two there that um, Olivia Scalara is uh, picking up on Mia Carboni, and then um, Pablo way in lane six. Actually, I think he definitely untouched Mia. I didn't see if he out-touched um, Olivia. And, and then we had Olivia Wade and Charlotte Dowd. Yeah, very good freshmen. swim. Very good swim by Tyler. I, I couldn't tell if it was, it's going to be close to a, um, it's, it's a very good time. I, I can only tell you it was in the 23s. Shallow. I'm curious if it's a lot sh uh, more shallow than Keith Tech where yeah. um, Usually some wow that nice is swim by a nice Aditya. swim by Aditya. I wish I and had. I have to say, Lucas I did is, not. Lucas, Lucas is, is coming. Yep, yep. yep. Whoa, Sophie is come on, Lucas, to... push. All okay. right, I think Sophia might have out touched him. Sports. Now, what did you say, Sean Haley? Is it Sean? Sean Haley's a junior. He's, he, he's trying to beat he's, out. Uh, he, yeah, he's got his. I think eyes he's got to keep on. going. Go, go, go. And then, uh, let's see. Let's, come on, uh, Tyler. Not to, well, Tyler, Tyler and Sean, look Sean. at that. They're neck yeah. and neck. And oh, my gosh. All right, I got, I got uh, Tyler at a 56.10. I don't know. Yeah. Um, it's a very good time. Um, I should have caught Cassie as well. So coming in here on uh, lane six, that was Katie Balster. And then we had um, Anna and then Elizabeth. Hopkinton Hillers swimming hit the pool of Milford High School to determine their results versus Holliston Medway Co-op. Each team is swimming separately this year. Results for this contest should be determined by Friday, March 18th. Here's a look at how it went. Five bingo, so that's three fives for, for Olivia. Good job. Seven, six and a half. Let's just have two judges tonight. Seven and a half. And then um, 
Deirdre and Natalie are battling it out. At the moment, Deirdre is a little bit ahead of Natalie. So let's see how they all do on the turns. The turns can make all the difference. You can really pick up a lot of, um, that wasn't the, the best turn for Deirdre, but uh, she definitely pulled a little bit ahead of Natalie, which is good. She actually could catch Kevin Connor. Won the race, yeah. Kevin won the race by, by a lot. He looked great. She could catch Connor if she could just uh, almost. Okay. All right. Very nice. Nice. It was a and, good race. Uh, Natalie yeah. is finishing up here. She looks great. She finished strong, Natalie, too. Absolutely. I think they all, I think that's personally, I feel it's one of the most challenging uh, events, yeah. events. So. Hopkinton Hillers JV Volleyball defeated Holliston in three straight sets and took their first home contest with a sweep. Following the JV game, Hiller Varsity Volleyball took on Holliston and started off with a nice first set. Steve Sweetapple had the call. Just long. Nice eye. That's it. So the Hillers take the first set 25 to 17. Uh, Lorette with the serve. Yeah, let's read digress. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh! Nice play. <laughs> portal. Blue. Oh, great play. Gilday. Nice. Great play from Mel. After a back and forth second set, it ended well for the Hillers as they took the second set 25 to 19. In the third set, the Hillers took control. Seven zero, Hillers up. Sam, Catherine, back set down the right down the middle. There you go. Match point for the Hillers. Okay, Powers, there we go. Nice emphatic ending from Kate. Hopkinton took the third set 25 to 18 and the match via a sweep. Hopkinton Hillers freshman football took on Holliston this past Friday. It was a good defensive battle. Holliston found the end zone in the first quarter. You're gonna line it up once again out of the gun. Sahagi in the backfield. Motion from right to left, takes the snap, Sahagian up the middle, here he goes, breaking tackles, cuts to the near side, into the end zone, touchdown Holliston Panthers. A 25-yard touchdown run by the freshman Kevin Sahagian. The Holliston touchdown would be the only score in the game, as both teams continuously made big stops and put up a great defensive effort to end the game in a six to nothing final. Hiller's varsity also played Holliston on the road the following day and lost a close game 37 to 27. You can view the varsity game through our friends at HCAT Television Holliston Community Access. The JV team hosted Halston this past Monday, and the game started off with a bang. As it's going to be a low kickoff that'll sail along the ground. Seamus Murphy will return it, and he's going to have a very good return. There he goes, across midfield to the 20, the 10, and right into the end zone. How about that? An opening kickoff return for a touchdown for the Hopkinton Hillers, and just like that, we have a six to nothing game. A huge opening kickoff return from Seamus Murphy puts the Hillers up six to nothing, and that's how the score stayed following the conversion attempt. Halston with the ball at their own 20 in the second quarter, and this happens. 30. 
Riley out of the gun. Takes the snap. Looks up field under pressure, and he's brought down. Another Hiller's sack teaming up was Riley Finnegan and Devin Canty to bring down Kylie to reserve clock to maybe get another opportunity at another drive. And it, it was that last time because it is fourth down here. Snap, and it is going to go over the head of the punter into the end zone, and that is going to be a safety. A safety puts the Hillers up eight to nothing. In the third quarter, both teams went back and forth with some great defensive stops. The game stayed an eight to nothing lead in favor of the Hillers heading into the fourth. In the fourth quarter, Holliston found the end zone. Marked at the Hillers three yard line. Kylie gonna line it up out of the pistol. Olsen in the backfield, he'll fake the handoff, throws to his left, has a wide open target, and it's hauled in for a touchdown. What a great play there by Holliston. Some good trickery by Kylie. A three-yard reception to Holliston's Colin Kerr from quarterback TJ Kylie makes it an 8-6 game. Holliston attempted a two-point conversion to tie the game. Kylie line it up out of the gun, takes the snap. He'll hand it off, run up the middle, pushing his way forward is Harding, but he is going to be stopped short. The conversion was no good. Towards the end of the fourth quarter, however, Holliston driving at their own 48. But also on their last drive, was able to find the end zone. Let's see if they can keep the momentum going. Kylie out of the gun. He'll hand it off. And no, he fakes it. Play action. Throws up the middle, and it's intercepted. Picking it off is Braden Hicks. It went off the hands of his target, and Hicks is there to collect. And he will take it into Holliston territory all the way to the 40. Hopkinton's Braden Hicks with the interception, but Holliston would get the ball back. Lisher out of the pistol, labeling it in the backfield, play action, rolls to his left, throws up field, and it's intercepted. And that is just what Holliston needed there. He tries to throw up the middle and jumping up and picking it off was Miguel de Jesus. Miguel de Jesus picks off the pass, and Holliston had one last opportunity. Kylie out of the gun, takes the snap, hands it off once again, and this time they're ready for him. Harding is gonna be stopped for a loss. Backfield, takes the snap, and he is in trouble. Went play action, but did not fool the defense, and he's brought down for a loss. Robert Lisher leading the way on the sack. Allison, they need to convert here, fourth and 10. Kylie takes the snap, rolls to his right, in trouble, throws up the middle, no one's there. A turnover on downs. The Hopkinton defense gets the job done and takes the game in the JV battle, eight to six. Also this past Monday, Hopkinton swimming and dive hit the pool at Milford High School to post results for their meet versus Ashland. Here's a look. Oh gosh. Good job. Great job. Just a little scary sometimes. <laughs> uh, you parents have nerves of steel. Uh, Alyssa. Now, Alyssa is uh, swimming for Wheaton next year, and she really enjoyed uh, last April, March and April, speaking with the coach during COVID. That's when she really got to know the coach of Wheaton, and that really helped her make her decision. Beautiful nice. swim by both yeah. Alyssa and Kevin. The result of the meet is to be determined, but good results by the Hillers. This past Tuesday, Hiller girls volleyball took on Medfield. Steve Sweetapple had the call. Little rep with a bullet. Oh, oh. <laughs> nice. Gardner tried to <laughs> duck to let that one go long, but she couldn't get out of the way because the ball was coming so fast. End it, take a break, start all over. 
Hannah. Oh. Millie puts that one deep. Good get from Rachel. Bump set outside. Bub goes deep. Sam gets that one to Rachel. Right in the middle for Millie. Just tips it, and that's it. In the first set, Medfield went on a big run towards the end, but the Hillers would hang on to take the set 25 to 20. In the second set, the Hillers came through big. McCarran handles that. Rachel powers. Nice play from Kate. Side out, Hillers. Good set point. Sam. Rachel in the middle, Michaela, nice. Nice swing from Grady, and that's the second set. Hopkinton takes the set 25 to 14. In the third set, Medfield did all they could to keep the match going. Right on the back line, Wagon Seller with a good kill. Great course cross court hit. And Kate gets us back underway, it just drops that one over. Beautiful. Whatever it was. And of course, every year we still can't hear it from the stands. Oh, great block. Medfield gets to it. They've got a free ball. Let's see what they do. Kate, Catherine, Millie down the middle. Well done. Sam, Rachel, back set. Dion, that's it. But the Hillers were just too much and took the set 25 to 20 and improve to three wins and one loss on the season. On Monday, March 29th, Hillers JV football met up with Ashland. The Hillers on their first drive of the game started at the Ashland 30, but drove up the field. Set this time, he had Lee to his right and an up back, and he'll go to the up back, and that is going to be taken into the end zone for a touchdown. Joseph Carazza with the touchdown for the Hillers, and they are up six to nothing, an 18 yard touchdown run. A Joseph Carazza touchdown makes it a six to nothing game, and the Hillers follow up with a two point conversion attempt. Stevens out of the gun, and he'll go once again to Carazza, who will bounce off tackle, and did he get in? Yes, he did. It's an eight nothing lead for the Hillers. Two point conversion is good. Eight to nothing is how the score would stay until the second quarter. Start of the second quarter, Ashland with the ball. Up out of the gun. Back to the quarterback's left, he'll throw it and it's intercepted and it's gonna be taken up the far side. And with the interception, it is Paul Lisher, the sophomore. Interception, Paul Lisher, and the Hillers get the ball all the way at about the Ashland three. First play of the drive, Joe Carazza gets the job done. And it is going to be a run into the end zone. An easy touchdown there after the interception for the Hillers. The conversion was unsuccessful. The score remained 14 to nothing, Hillers. Hopkinton driving again towards the end of the second quarter. That will certainly be pretty confusing for the defense to keep track of. Out of the gun with Flanagan to his left. He's going to take it himself. Has all kinds of room up the middle towards the end zone. Out of the gun he goes. Back to his left. Three receivers to his left. He'll hand it off. Run up the middle. And with these into the end zone. Owen Flanagan for the Hillers touchdown. A five-yard touchdown run by Owen Flanagan makes it a 20 to nothing Hillers lead, and that's how it stayed until the halftime break. Third quarter, Ashland found the end zone. Lined up to either side. Takes the snap, airs it out to his right, and it's caught! And that is going to be a 35-yard touchdown pass for Ashland. A 35-yard touchdown pass. They followed up with a two-point conversion to make it a 20-8 score. Ashland with perhaps their last chance to get back into the game. So 
Allison calls it the war package. And do we have a fumble here? It looks like at least a stop for no gain. And we do! A fumble recovered by the Hillers! A fumble recovered by Hopkinton. The Hillers take the win 20 to 8 in the JV matchup. Hillers swimming and dive was also in action this past Monday night. As they posted results for their virtual meet with Framingham, here's a look. strong over yeah. in uh, lane six. Connor had a great meet the last meet, he, too. He really he did. did. And Ishii looks really good. Ishii looks awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Now she's, a, she's a junior, right? She, Ishii is a junior, yeah. and then Katie's a freshman. So yeah, I think good Katie's job, really... Katie. uh yeah. Katie's going to be on this team for years. Yeah, I think it's great. There's a lot of really strong freshmen. I know I repeat that every week, but it's really impressive to see, and it's great for the longevity of the team and the depth of the team. Yep. Results will be released later this week. Heading into Monday night, Boy Swimming has three wins and one loss, while the girls' team is a perfect 4-0. and oh. The Hillers and Westwood celebrated Dig Pink Night to raise money to fight breast cancer as they hit the courts this past Tuesday night. The first set went back and forth. Steve Sweetapple on the call. McKim... Try to close this set out. Boys. Bump set. Caden. Nope. And that's it. Westwood takes the first set. 25 to 23. Westwood takes the first set 25 to 23. In the second set, the Hillers got some momentum going. Kim, Mirabella, Sam, Kate. I'm going back to McKim. Kate with a block. Oh, just pushed it wide. It was a tip, though. There's Kate. Two hops. And so Hopkinton takes the second set, 25 to 19. Hopkinton takes the second set, 25 to 19. In the third set, it was all Hillers. Back to serve. Or, um, yep. Bub gets it back, and that's it. Bub closes out the third set. Hopkinton takes that 25 to 12. Hopkinton takes the set 25 to 12 and goes up two to one. In the fourth set, the Hillers go on a big run towards the end. And Bub gets it back underway. Doherty once again goes to Haley and blocked again. There's Mirabella with the block. Anna, Rachel, Pellucci. Oh, great swing from Pellucci, and that's it. Great way to end the match on a fantastic hit from Mirabella. So Hopkinton wins the four set 25 to 20 for a three set to one victory over Westwood. Hopkinton ends the fourth set and takes it 25 to 20 to capture the three to one victory over Westwood. The Hillers are now 6-1 and one overall on the season. On Saturday, April 3rd, Hillers Varsity Football hosted Medfield in their first home game of the Fall 2 season. The game would be a battle filled with many momentum shifts. Just 90 seconds into action, Medfield senior captain quarterback Ryan Murray connects with senior James Wilder. Line up to the left. Lone flanker to the right, he'll throw it to the right. He has a target, and it's James Wilder. There he goes, he is off. 2010 touchdown Medfield. A 65 yard touchdown reception, and just like that, it's six to nothing Medfield. A 65 yard touchdown reception. The extra point makes it seven nothing Medfield. 
Hopkinton responded in their first offensive drive of the game. Two receivers either side, takes the snap, rolls to his right, throws upfield, has a target, it is hauled in. And it's going to be a nice gain here for the Hillers. That should be a first down. Brian Keefe once again coming through in the right area code. It's going to be a handoff up the middle and into the end zone for a Hillers touchdown. Cam Mulvaney. The Hillers march down the field 55 yards for a touchdown. Senior captain Cam Mulvaney rushed for the eight yard touchdown and the extra point tied the game up at seven apiece. After forcing a midfield punt, the Hillers offense driving again. Salyard's going to line it up out of the gun, back to his right. Two receivers on either side. Takes the snap, rolls to his right, looks upfield, throws upfield, and it's caught by Keith Along the far side, and a nice gain there. That's going to be a first down for the Hillers. Receivers either side. Takes the snap, hands it off, run up the middle, big run up the middle, and a touchdown! Cam Mulvaney, an 11-yard Hillers touchdown. The Hillers march 69 yards and fed Mulvaney once again for an 11-yard touchdown run to make it a 14-7 game. Medfield, however, quickly responded. Murray out of the gun, back to his right. Two receivers either side, takes the snap, looks to his left, airs it out, upfield, has a target, all dead, and there he goes! He's able to escape the tackle and he'll take it all the way to the house. That was the captain, Ben Leonard. Quarterback Ryan Murray found senior captain Ben Leonard wide open in the middle of the field. Leonard took the reception to the end zone for a 79-yard touchdown. The first quarter ended tied at 14 with Medfield driving into Hiller's territory after forcing a punt. Yards a little more yards than I thought. Takes the snap, hands it off, and into the end zone he goes. TJ Casey, an eight-yard touchdown run. A little less than two minutes into the second quarter, Medfield capped off a 60-yard touchdown drive with an eight-yard touchdown run by junior TJ Casey and made it a 21-14 game. The rest of the second quarter was filled with great defensive stops on both sides, and the game went into the half with Medfield leading 21-14. In the second half, the Hillers offense got going once again. Takes the snap, he's gonna hand it off, run up the middle, Mulvaney breaking free, here he goes to the 35, fighting his way to the 40, big gain there, Cam Mulvaney, all the way to the 42 yard line, a 22 yard pickup. Salyard's gonna line it up out of the gun, Mulvaney in the backfield, he is going to hand it off, here goes Mulvaney up the middle, fights his way across midfield, to the 45, works up the far side, 40, 35 to the 30, and he is going to be taken down after a huge gain. Salyard's going to line it up out of the gun. Mulvaney the back to his right. He'll hand it off to Mulvaney. Bursting up the middle. Breaking a tackle into the end zone. Senior Cam Mulvaney caps off an 80-yard drive with a 4-yard touchdown run. The extra point tied the game at 21 apiece. Medfield, however, had a very quick response. And he'll send it sailing, end over end it goes, all the way back to about the five, and he lost it. It went off his hands, he dropped it, it is picked up, and now we're gonna have what looks like a very good return up the near side. James Wilder breaking free across midfield, 40, 30, 20, the 10, and into the end zone, wow. Unbelievable, on the kickoff, the initial returner bobbled it, and then lost the football. And then James Wilder picks it up and takes it about 95 yards to the house. The extra point made it a 28-21 Medfield lead. Towards the end of the third quarter, the Hillers strung together another touchdown drive. Receivers spread out to either side. Takes the snap. Here goes Mulvaney working up the middle. Breaks a tackle. And he's going to have a very nice run here as he breaks another tackle. And he gets close to the 10. Okay, 15. I stand corrected. 12-yard gain. It's certainly a little difficult for us to see the yard lines at that end of the field. 
Salyard's going to roll to his left, throws to the end zone, has a target, it's hauled in for a touchdown! A 15-yard touchdown reception by Nicholas Sessi. And the extra point from sophomore Avery Ravich made it a 28-28 game. The Hillers possessed the ball for nearly nine minutes to start the fourth quarter and capped off an 88-yard touchdown drive with a 13-yard keeper from senior quarterback Cole Salyards. Back to his right, takes the snap, looks to his right, has time, and now he is going to be in some trouble, runs to his left, finds some space, into the end zone he goes! Cole Salyards! He stood in the pocket looking to pass, and then he said, you know what, the whole left side of the field's open. I'm just going to take this myself. A 13-yard touchdown run. And made it a 35-28 game with the Ravage extra point. Medfield, however, wasn't done yet. In the backfield, that's TJ Casey. Two receivers spread out to either side. Takes the snap. Looks up the middle, in trouble, gets rid of it, throws up the middle, has a wide open target, and it's hauled in by Wilder, who will take it to the house. Oh boy, a 51-yard connection between Ryan Murray and James Wilder. And then Murray hit Wilder again on a risky two-point conversion to make it a 36-35 Medfield lead. Three minutes, 42 seconds remaining in the game. Plenty of time for the Hillers. And about two to go for the Hillers. Out of the gun. Salyards rolls to his right, and it is off of the hands of one receiver and into the hands of Champlin. So the Hillers will move the chains. Other side. Takes the snap, rolls to his left, looking upfield, looking to pass, gonna take it himself, and he takes it to the house! Touchdown, Hillers! After a good mix of gains from the running and passing game, quarterback Cole Salyards took care of business again with a seven yard touchdown run to cap off a 70 yard drive and make it a 42 to 36 game. Medfield with one last opportunity. Left. And now he's going to roll to his left, airs it out, up the field, incomplete. Good defensive coverage by Cole Salyards, and time has expired, and the Hopkinton Hillers take the win, 42-36. The Hillers' defense took care of business on the one play Medfield had time for and took the 42-36 win in perhaps the most action-packed game of the season. Three lead changes took place in the final three minutes and 42 seconds of the incredible game. Quarterback Cole Salyards threw for one touchdown, a 15-yarder. He also had two touchdown runs, a 13 and a 7-yarder, and he had over 100 yards passing. Running back Cam Mulvaney had three touchdown runs, an 8-yarder, an 11-yarder, and a 4-yarder and he had about 175 yards rushing. The Hillers are now one and two on the season. Hopkinton Hillers JV football took on Brockton this past Monday. It was a scoreless game until this happened in the second quarter. Stevens out of the gun, Mulvaney to his left, two receivers either side. Takes the snap, looks to his left, in trouble, gets rid of it, up the left side, has a wide open target, and it's caught. Seamus Murphy gonna take it to the house. Touchdown, Hillers! Wyatt Stevens connects with Seamus Murphy for a 56-yard touchdown to make it a 6-0 game. The two-point conversion failed, and it remained a 6-0 Hiller lead heading into the halftime break. In the third quarter, Brockton strung together a drive. Turco out of the gun. He's going to take it himself up the middle, find some room. Slips a couple tackles, now breaking free up the right side, and he has a big gain, but did take a massive hit from Sokol. Justin Sokol got in there and just clocked him. Andrew Bunnen on the initial wrap. But in any case, fourth and goal from the one. Here we go. 
Can the Hillers defense make a big stop? It's going to be a keeper. Turco into the end zone, and this game is tied at six apiece. A one-yard touchdown by Matt Turco caps off the 92-yard drive and ties the game at six apiece. The conversion attempt was no good. The Hillers responded very soon after. And it'll be an end-over-end kickoff. Back to the 20-yard line it goes. On the return, it's Carrazza. Here he goes to the near side, the 35, the 40, the 45 across midfield into Brockton territory. The 30, the 20, the 10, and see you later, touchdown Hillers! An 80-yard kickoff return by Joseph Carrazza puts the Hillers right back on top. An 80-yard kickoff return by Joseph Carrazza makes it a 12-6 game. On the two-point conversion attempt, Wyatt Stevens connects with Sergio Melli and makes it a 14-6 game. Brockton responded on their next drive. Certainly a hurry-up style offense here. Turco going to line it up out of the gun, back to his left, two receivers spread out to either side. He will hand it off and... Finding some room is going to be Powell Jr. There he goes, up the near side into Hiller's territory. The 30, the 20, the 10, and he is going to be brought out of bounds and around the two. And it's rooting on the defense. Out of the gun, double back formation, hands it off to the left back, and right into the end zone goes Mauricio Powell Jr., a four-yard touchdown run by Mauricio Powell Jr. makes it a 14-12 game. Brockton then went for two to tie it up, and the conversion was no good, keeping the game at 14-12. Brockton with their final opportunity to take a lead. Looks like Max Foster is in at quarterback, and he indeed is. Line it up out of the gun. Powell Jr. to his left. A four receiver set. Three receiver spread out to the right. Takes the snap. Looks up the middle. Throws up the middle. And they will not have enough. A turnover on downs. And the Hillers hang on for the 14 12 win. Also Monday night, Hillers Swimming posted results for their meet with Holliston Medway. Here's a look. We spent a lot of time watching you swim in this place. Yeah, and over the also years. getting disqualified, I'm sure. Yes, getting disqualified numerous times. But <laughs> what I remember the most is that when we first dropped you off, you the first time you jumped into the pool, you chipped a tooth. Oh, yes, I do. Yeah, you remember that? Five tooth. years old or something, yep. So, um... Oh, <laughs> Sophia, uh, Sophia Luce is pulling through. Uh, definitely a She looks good. The, she looks good. The end of the... Uh, we're Grace obviously rooting kicking, for Deirdre. Yeah. yeah, she's kicking now. She's it's great. moving now. It's moving. We have Pierce, nice. right? Pierce out there in lane six. Oh, wait. Am I in the and then um, lane one showing a lot of speed there, Katie Bolster. Yep. The results for the teams should be released soon. Hiller's Varsity Volleyball took on Norwood this past Tuesday night. Hopkinton dominated the first set. Steve Sweetapple on the call. Oh, another block. Great block from Kate. Hillers take the first set 25-6 and continued their dominance into the second set. Annoying. Great block. Powers with another. A 25-3 second set. The Hillers would finish it off in the third set. Oh, and that's it. Not not a pretty way to end it, but no, the girls will take it. Wow. Twenty-five to sixteen in the third set, and the Hillers take the three-set sweep over Norwood, and improves to eight and one on the season. Hopkinton Hillers swimming posted results for their meet against Boston Latin, and then celebrated senior night. Here's a look at the festivities.
That was great. Nice job. Good job there. A little tiny bit short in the entry, but I think it'll score well. Six, six and a half, six and a half. And that'll conclude the diving for the evening. All right, look at this. Alyssa's giving it her all for her uh, senior night here. She's, all right, nice swim. Excellent for both of them. Great job, Alyssa, and excellent job, Kevin. That was quite a race. What a finish. Uh, let's see what happens on the turn here. At the minute, you just got a little bit of um, a lead over uh, Eliz Elizabeth, but Elizabeth is looking strong. She's picking it up her kick. Deirdre's picking up her kick, and Natalie is as well. Really great race. Good race. So yeah. uh, Natalie, Deirdre, and Elizabeth, really nice. By all five swimmers, actually. I'd love to know the times. Love to text the scoring deck. Yeah. yeah. That was nice a nice turn. turn. Nice turn. Yeah. Oh, ooh. wow. Ooh, Somebody's competition. Coming up on well, Declan Cassie, coming. yeah. Cassie. And Cassie. Cassie's, Cassie's uh, right gonna with them. Cassie's going to win it. She's going to win it, I think. Oh, She's gonna I win don't it. know. I don't know. It's going to be a. Wow. Whoa, that was Photo some finish. finish. Very nice. I don't know. She put the afterburners on at the end. Yeah. But Declan definitely was right there uh, with her, as was Pierce. So it'll be nice to see the times on that one. Definitely. She wow. and Katie are neck and neck and uh anna is uh she's doing okay holding her own there she is she looks good she does she does all right uh lucas is looking good wow davis davis uh won by a substantial lead but there's uh lucas for second and uh ryan there in third and for the girls we have uh i think katie then ishi and then um and we'll we'll place third all right and the carbonis Dutas, he was a uh, cameraman uh, last year, yeah, he was, right? And yeah. I think even the year before, he, he ran it a lot. All right, and the Fishers. So they have, Alyssa has a twin brother who will be playing baseball at Fairfield next year. Wow. All right, the whole brows. The Lucases. And um, I mentioned before, Alyssa's the only one who's going to swim, but um, Juliana is going to RPI for lacrosse. She's a goalie. That's Cassie White and her parents. That's it. I think that's a wrap. Nice shot of all the seniors and Pablo. Hillers Swimming is scheduled to wrap up their fall two season Thursday night at the Milford Pool versus Ashland. This past Friday, Hillers Varsity Football played their senior night game versus Westwood. After forcing a Westwood punt on the first drive of the game, the Hillers found the end zone. 
five receiver set. Three to his right, takes the snap, looks to his right, and now is going to throw to his right. Has a target. It's caught by Keefe. Up the far sideline he goes to the 30, all the way to about the 20-yard line. Brian Keefe, a big gain for the Hillers on their very first offensive snap. Out of the pistol this time. Mulvaney to his right. Two receivers spread out to his right as well. He'll take the snap, hands it off. Mulvaney up the middle, first down, and the end zone. Touchdown, Hillers! An 11 yard touchdown run by Cam Mulvaney. And just like that, it's 6 0 Hopkinton. An 11 yard touchdown run by Cam Mulvaney. Westwood responded on the following drive. Receivers in tight along the right side, takes the snap, rolls to his right, under pressure, throws up field, has a target, and it's caught at the five to the end zone, and I think he might have got in. Yes, he did. Wow. Grady Mahoney on the reception. A 39-yard touchdown for Westwood. A 39-yard touchdown reception thrown by Connor Danielli to senior Grady Mahoney. It remained a 7-7 game until the second quarter. Make it second and one from the 46. Out of the gun, takes the snap, rolls to his right, looks upfield, throws upfield, and it is caught at the Hillers' 10-yard line. What a catch by Aiden O'Connor, and what a throw by Danielli. That was After forcing a Hillers punt, Westwood found the end zone early in the second quarter. Danielli is going to go out of the gun once again. Maroon the back to his left. Two receivers in tight to either side. Takes the snap, looks to his left, throws to his left, has a target, and it is caught for the touchdown. Grady Mahoney on the four-yard touchdown reception. And that's his second touchdown reception of the game. He had a 39-yard touchdown reception to make it a 6-6 six to six game at the time. Brendan Dunnigan connects with Grady Mahoney once again on a four-yard touchdown pass. The extra point makes it a 14-7 Westwood lead. After the Westwood touchdown, the Hillers would score 35 unanswered points. Up to the line they go. And it looks like they got Lisher in there as the quarterback once again. And he will take the snap, looks to, looks upfield, has Salyards and it's caught! 40 midfield into Westwood territory, 30, 20, 10, see you later, touchdown, Hillers! And A 75-yard touchdown reception. And that one's not coming back. Right, or excuse me, 85-yard touchdown 80, reception. 85. My math was off there. Ah, math's math. <laughs> well, luckily, we've got a full-time accountant here, so. That's right. <laughs> the first touchdown in the 35 unanswered point run, an 85-yard connection. Sophomore Robert Lisher finds Cole Salyards on a little trick play. Extra point makes it 14 to 14. Salyards gonna line it up out of the gun. Mulvaney the back to his left. A four receiver set, two spread out to either side. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff. He'll go to Mulvaney. Up the middle he goes, 30, 25. Over to the 20, cutting to the near side. 15, 10, staying on his feet inside the five. And did he get in? Just a little bit short, but what a run by Cam Mulvaney. He'll be out there to finish this off. We shall see. Out of the gun is Salyards. Mulvaney getting the call up the middle. In he goes. Touchdown, Hillers. And then a one yard touchdown run by Cam Mulvaney, and the extra point makes it 21 to 14. Maroon in the backfield. The snap is high. The ball gets away. Who got it? It looks like the Hillers did. And recovering the fumble was Aiden Morin. That's over three minutes. If they score. And Salyard's gonna keep this up the middle and working inside the five, still on his feet, pushing the pile, can he get there? Still on his feet, he just won't go down and it looks like he finally will at around the two. Here's more and more beyond the trees. Salyard's out of the gun, a motion right to left and he is gonna take it himself up the middle into the end zone. Cole Salyard's a one yard touchdown run. A one-yard keeper by Cole Salyards, and the extra point makes it 28 to 14. And uh, that is Salyards out there, five receiver set, three to his left, throws up field, has a target, and it's caught, and he's gone! Touchdown, Hillers, Nicholas Sessi, 
a 43 yard touchdown reception. A 43 yard connection between Salyards and Nick Lasessi. Plus the extra point makes it a 35 to 14 game. That's how the score stayed until the halftime break. A 28 point second quarter for the Hillers. The Hillers pick it right back up in the third quarter. Takes the snap and he's gonna take it right up the middle, bounces off tackle, up the left side he goes, the 20, the 10, the five, into the end zone for the touchdown. A 33 yard touchdown run by Cole Salyards. Hillers led 42 to 21 heading into the fourth quarter. Hillers continuing a drive that started in the third quarter with three minutes and three seconds left. Ends at 9.59 left in the fourth with a four-yard touchdown run by sophomore Wyatt Stevens. To his left, two receivers spread out to either side. He will take the snap, and here he goes up the middle into the end zone. Touchdown, Hillers! A four-yard touchdown run by Wyatt Stevens. The Hillers would take the game in dominant fashion by a final score of 48 to 29. The Hillers improved a two and two overall on the season with the win. Prior to the game, the Hillers celebrated senior night. Check out the festivities on the game broadcast on our YouTube page. Hopkinton Hillers varsity football hosted Norwood in their final game of the season. Unfortunately, they fell short in a 49-35 final. The game, however, was very exciting. You can check out highlights soon at our YouTube page, youtube.com slash HCAMTV. Hello everyone, Tom Nappy here with Caden Boyce and Cassie White, the captains of this year's Hopkinton Hillers girls volleyball team. Caden and Cassie, how are you? Good, how are you? Excellent. Well, you uh, just completed the first week of regular season games. Two very impressive wins against Holliston. How's everything going so far? How are the practices and how are the games? Kaden, we'll start with you. It's going really good. It's good to see our team working really well together. We're all upperclassmen, so we're really close. And um, starting our season out with two wins is really impressive. So I'm proud of our team. That's terrific. Cassie, how's everything on your end? Kind of same as Caden said, I feel like we have a lot of experience. There's just a lot of leadership, like everyone works together already. So it's looking good. All right. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourselves. Uh, how long you've been playing volleyball? Do you play any other sports? And uh, do you plan on playing anything in college? Uh, we're all curious about that. Caden, we'll start with you. Um, so I've been playing volleyball for a while um three or four of my sisters played for margie when they were in high school so i've always grown up watching their games but i officially started in sixth grade at um coach grabmeyer's saturday clinics and so yeah terrific cassie how about yourself uh do you uh, just play volleyball how long you've been playing and do you play any other sports I started a little later. I started playing just in the backyard with like my neighbor right before eighth grade tryout. So that's when I started. I made that team and then I played club freshman and sophomore year. That's where I like really got into it. And then I also am on the swim team. I'm doing that right now along with volleyball. So it's been a bit busy, but um, I've done that all four years as well as volleyball. Terrific. Uh, so what are your thoughts on this year's team? How's the camaraderie and, uh, I know there's a lot of new faces on this year's team from last year, and obviously you're playing in very different months from where the season typically is. How's everything going, and uh, what do you think about this year's team? Uh, Cassie, we'll start with you this time. I feel like it's going good. Like we like said, it's all upperclassmen. There's a bunch of juniors, and then there's the seniors, which we're all already comfortable with each other. Um, and I just think even though things have been a little different, different time of year, there's no fans, can't high five, things like that. Like it's not, I don't think it's affecting us as much as, I don't know. We're not, we're just not letting it like really get in the way of our play. And I feel like 
we're doing a good job at still being close together and communicating. So it's going good. Terrific. Uh, Kaden, what are your thoughts on this year's team? How's everything going? It's going good. I totally agree with Cassie. Um, we have great new additions, a middle and a right side, and some back row defensive players, and they're looking really strong. So um, I'm super excited to continue working with them. I'm curious. We had this COVID-19 lockdown. Everybody was stuck in their homes. What are some of the things that you did during this uh, COVID-19 lockdown when everybody had all this extra time? Cassie, we'll start with you for this one. My main thing was I started to run because before <laughs> quarantine, I was just, I couldn't run like over a mile, but um, with all the extra time, I just started to run outside and on the treadmill. That was like the main thing. And then just hanging out, chilling out. There you go. Well, I'm sure uh, coach Grabmeyer will be happy to hear that you uh, worked on your uh, cardio there and got ready for the season. Uh, Kaden, how about you? What are some of the things that you did during the, uh, COVID-19 lockdown? Similar things. I spent a lot of time with my family. Um, my sisters were with us for a um, good few months and my dad bought a net so I could do some outdoor lessons. So I've been doing that in the summer and um, stuff like that, socially distanced with my club coach. So that has been a great help to me for preparing for the season. So we got Coach Grabmeyer joining us right now. Coach, how are you? How's everything going? It's good, but I'm so happy to be able to see these girls' faces because we they've been masked the whole time I've seen them the last, you know, since volleyball started. So I almost forgot what they looked like. It's good <laughs> to see them. Absolutely. And, you, you know, in my preference, I like doing interviews on Zoom right now because I, I prefer to interview somebody without the mask. I just think it's better to, you know, number one, hear what they're saying because it's tough talking yeah. through those things. But, of course, uh, you want to see the face as well. Uh, so, Coach, speaking of the masks, how is everything going with the masks as far as practices? I know it's an adjustment. Uh, and obviously, you got to wear a mask during the practice and during the games. How's that adjustment been for you? I find it's really hot wearing the mask. I, I think I give credit to the athletes because they're, I thought it was going to be a lot harder for them to do than they seem to be making it just like another part of the uniform. And I don't, I feel like they're, they haven't missed a step. Um, I think it might be hard. I don't like being able to not being able to see their faces so I can see reactions and be able to read people. I can't anymore. You know, I just have to assume everything is going well unless they stop and tell me. Um, but other than that, I mean, they're great at they're They haven't, like I said, they haven't missed a step. Uh, can you talk about the team this season? How's this group? How are they adjusting? You, you lost some great players from last year due to gra graduation, but how's this group this year? We always do. It's kind of like the Patriots way, like next, next man up. <laughs> That's kind of what how uh, can volleyball year. is. <laughs> they're, they're. I don't know. It's a strong team this year is all juniors and seniors. So I feel like they're coming into it um, with a lot of experience and just a lot of confidence. I mean, there's, they all know what they're doing. They're all perfectly capable. And I, I have a little bit of a larger roster this year than I normally would have, but at the same time, um, I'm finding out that it's a good thing we do because you never know when someone might be sick or might need to take a couple of days off and, um, and it's nice having like that many players, as long as I can, you know, figure out a way to make it worthwhile for everyone that we're getting, you know, some playing time in there when, when I can, um, I think that I like having this roster and, and everyone is just a great attitude. So that makes me happy too. They, I feel like everyone's the, the word this year for this season is grateful. I feel like everyone's just happy to be on the court because, we might not have been. Well, that is going to conclude this episode of HKM Sports Talk. Don't forget, you can catch us every Wednesday at 3 p.m. For everyone at HKM, I'm Tom Nappy. Thanks for tuning in. Take care, be well, and we'll talk to you again soon. We'll see you soon for the spring season. Go Hillers! <laughs>